Hey guys, and welcome back to NJ Education YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna break down the TOEFL exam, what it is, why you might need it, and how best to prepare for it. So if you've heard of TOEFL or you're sitting it soon, keep watching because this will be very useful for you. All right, guys, so let's jump straight into this. I'm very fortunate today to be joined by uh, Joanne. Hi, Joanne, how are you doing? Hello, very well, thank you. Good to Pleased see you. to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, so, um, Joe, just briefly, um, how much experience do you have with, with TOEFL? Um, and, um, and yeah, just tell us uh, what you think about the exam. Well, I have taught some TOEFL. It's not my favourite exam, but I have taught it. Um, because some of the structure is similar to the other exam I teach. I, the, IELTS. the IELTS exam. Um, it's more of an American-based system of an exam. Um, it's not so recognised as the IELTS, I think, but, but in the United States it's more recognised, mm. but not as recognised in the UK. Um, it's very similar. It has the same four elements. It's got the reading section, a writing section, a speaking section, and a listening section. Um, but the questions are all mostly multiple choice. Mm. And more of the questions for reading are, I would say, similar to the SATs that the students do in the United States to get into university. The university entry exam. Yes. Mm. So it's very similar to that, but it is still testing um, speakers of other languages, um, their level to get into these universities. Um, there is more work in reading with grammar and uh, vocabulary. Mm -hmm and um, also like sentence structure and paragraph structure, mm -hmm. which is not that easy for speakers of uh, foreign languages. No. So this for me is where it differs. Uh, whereas the academic IELTS, you are re really it's just logical, the mm -hmm. answers. These ones are more, you have to really delve into the grammar side of it and the vocabulary side of it. Got it. All right. And um, Joe, do you remember on top of your head how long is the exam? Um, so the first part of the exam, the reading takes about 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you have the listening is about 30 minutes. Speaking is up to 17 minutes. It's between 15 and 17 minutes. Okay. And the writing is 50. So it's a little bit less time. Less as than well. denials. Yes, but there is um, less elements too. So there's 30 elements to the listening and the reading, mm -hmm. whereas in um, the listening f and, and reading for IELTS, it's 40. Yeah. And by mm. the way, guys, we're doing a separate video just to talk about the comparison between IELTS and TOEFL, Duolingo. So if, uh, if it's not already on, on, on the channel, there will be a link. Um, uh, plugged in uh, here soon on, on that, so keep uh, keep tuning in. Um, but um, Joe, it sounds you know it sounds like uh, TOEFL is an American exam, and you know it's more commonly used in America than in the UK. It is. It is recognised here, and it's recognised by what we would say Ivy League um, universities here too. Mm. The top universities do accept it. I just uh, think that not many people are taking it here for for the universities here uh for the universities in the united states it people do mm. have more of a tendency yeah. to take it yeah. for that um, for those universities makes sense and um joe often a question that we get all the time is you know students um you know write oh hi sir um you know what score do i need to get on, on toffel to get into harvard uh you know what would you say to what would you say to those it's students? very easy to find the answers to those questions. Uh, what my answer would be was either I would look it up for them, which would take probably about less than five minutes, or I'd say it's on their website. Go and have a look and go and have a look at the different exams that they accept. Yeah. Um, because it's usually there and it's in front of you. Yeah, and, and, and also the, the thing that I also reply, listen, if you, if you feel the need to ask someone something that can be Googled, you know, in under five minutes... <laughs> and you're aiming for Harvard, you're probably not going to get in. Yes, right? exactly. You know, you're, you're probably not going to make it. So just, you know, just, you know, save your time and, and, yes. and focus on something else. I think it's just trying to get you to do it for them. So my always my answer is, have a look. You have can look. look it up as well as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and another thing is, um, is, guys, very important for you to understand, 
if you're applying to the top universities, right, not just Harvard, you know, any top 50, they have bags of applicants per place. Majority of them are overqualified. You know, they have top grades, top TOEFL, top transcript, top everything. Mm -hmm. So just because you have your good score, whatever the score is, that doesn't actually make you special, right? So if you think that, okay, I'm going to do this TOEFL and, you know, I'm, I'm somehow special and unique, you know, you're deluding yourself because you're absolutely not. This is just not even the first hurdle. This is like the zeroth hurdle that you that you, that you get through. It's a bit like, um, you know, if you're applying to work in a company, you know, if you're applying to work in Uber as a driver, you know, um, it's expected that you have a driving license, okay? Just because you passed your driving test with zero errors, that does not make you special when, you know, you're competing for, you know, for a job there. Mm -hmm. um, like everyone else is a driver, you know, can drive a vehicle. So um, this is very similar. So this is just a one minute component. And the truth is, if you're struggling on the TOEFL um, and it's a difficulty for you and you're aiming for the top universities, you're probably not going to make it because the quality of your essay and everything else is going to be is going to be bad. Mm. So um, I don't know what 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 would your advice be to those students who are just struggling I with it? I, th and I think that um, I think firstly with the, with the application progress really needs to be planned. So they've got certain things they need to do. For the, they need to fill in the application form. They need to get their uh, personal statements ready. That all has to be in line with the TOEFL exam. Yeah. So that has to, they have to plan it. Yeah. I don't, again, don't leave things till the last minute of any of them. Yeah. You have to sort of be preparing for TOEFL while you're writing your personal statement, yeah, yeah. while you're filling in your applications, while you're deciding upon universities. Don't wait until you get a conditional offer to say, oh, and now I need TOEFL or IELTS, whatever. Don't leave it till the last minute. Make sure that you get onto all of these things at the same time. Yeah. Um, have a plan. Have a plan. Guys, mm. amen to that. Well, listen, um, guys, um, let's, I'm sure you'll join me in saying thank you to Joe for, for coming on and, and talking about the TOEFL. Joe, this was really useful. Thank you very much. And uh, all the best in your, uh, in your revision. And if you haven't already signed up to my newsletter, the link is down below. Uh, it's filled with a ton of practical advice and tips on university admissions as well as information on unique CV building events. So do check it out in the, in the link below. And if you need any TOEFL help, uh, do uh, give me a shout as well. But for now, thanks very much. And all Thank the best. you.